Okay, so today, as per your request, uh, we are talking about free will. Uh, this is a really complex problem in philosophy. Uh, people have been debating it for thousands of years, uh, and it doesn't seem like we've made much progress on it. Well, let's see if we can make some progress today. Let's see what you all think about this. So I'm going to start by providing some helpful definitions that will frame our discussion. Then I'll talk about some of the different camps in the free will debate. And then we'll talk about Vin, Vin, Van Inwagen's piece that I assigned for you today. Then we'll just talk about all these ideas and see what you all think. So if you ever start getting into the free will debate, there's a word that comes up a lot that is often associated with the position that free will does not exist. This term is known as determinism. And here's the definition I'm going to provide for you. It's the view that everything that happens in the universe is necessitated by what has already come before in such a way that nothing can happen other than the way it does. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. Often this kind of view is supported by the scientific discoveries that humans have made throughout history. Basically, this is what the view says. The universe works according to certain laws, according to certain rules. And what is happening right now is a direct result of everything that has happened before, everything that has happened previously. So the way scientists like to cash this out is our universe originated from the Big Bang. There was a point uh, at which time and space and everything in our universe originated. If we imagine this arrow as time, basically any event on the timeline, or we'll call this event 27, any event on the timeline is caused by the way the universe was previously. Some people like to imagine that the way the universe actually works is you have genuine choices in your life, you have free will, such that the future is not determined. If, we call it, if this is the line that separates the past from the future, a lot of people think that while the past is fixed, there are options that remain open to us. There are many different paths that we can take toward the future. Determinism denies that. Okay? Determinism says, look, based on our scientific and philosophical understanding of the universe, basically everything that is happening now is a direct result of what has come before, and it can't be otherwise. Right? The way the what's going to happen in the future is determined by what's happening now and the initial conditions that our universe was in at the time of the Big Bang. So the idea goes that because our universe operates according to these rules and laws and principles, and nothing that happens in the universe can violate these rules, laws, and principles, there is only one path that the future can take. We don't know what that path is. But the future is not actually open. There is one way that the future is going to go. There's one way that events are going to unfold. And that's just the way it is. This is what's known as determinism. 
I'd also like to define for you what we mean when we say free will. There are a few different ways you can define free will. I'm going to use uh, Van Inwagen's definition. He's putting forth what's called a positive conception of free will, but we'll talk about the difference between a negative conception and a positive conception throughout the lecture. You can basically define free will as the power or ability for someone to do things according to their own choosing. Wagen says in this piece, free will is not merely a negative concept. So there are two broad ways that you can conceptualize free will. The negative concept basically says, look, what it means to be free, to have a free will is a will that is not constrained in too many ways. You're not being hypnotized. Nobody's playing around with the processes that's going on in your brain. Some people think what it means to have free will is just that there aren't these constraints that are hindering you from doing certain things. The positive concept that I just wrote down here and that Van Inwagen is going to presume in this piece is that no, free will is, is not just lack of constraints. Free will is actually the power or the ability to choose to make decisions based on however you want to do that. Do you all kind of understand the distinction between these two different concepts? Somebody who believes in the negative concept of free will is going to say, well, you know, uh, as long as somebody wasn't holding a gun to your head, as long as, you know, you weren't uh, enslaved, as long as somebody isn't messing around with your mind or your brain in a manipulative way, you're free. Whereas those who believe in the positive concept are going to say, no, it's not just lack of constraints. It's also this power or this ability that we have to do things the way that we want to do them. So Van Inwagen is going to be utilizing the positive conception here. And I think it's useful to couch our discussion today uh, and frame it using the positive conception because I think that's what a lot of people think free will means. But as we go through the lecture today, see if you agree and see what you think about some of the questions that are raised. Now, there are many different camps in the free will debate. And basically, all of them have to do with this idea of determinism, whether or not people think determinism is true or not. So I'm going to lay out the different camps for you. Then we're going to go through what Van Inwagen has to say. He doesn't make these camps explicit in this piece, but I think it would be helpful to give you some terms to latch onto so that you can better understand what your opinions are on this question.
There are two broad camps when it comes to the question of free will. There are the incompatibilists and the compatibilists. Incompatibilism is the view that free will and determinism are incompatible. Basically, what these people think is that if determinism is true, then free will doesn't exist. But if it turns out that we do have free will, then determinism is false. There's not one way things are going to go in the future. Just being an incompatibilist does not tell anybody, though, whether or not you think free will exists. right? This position is just a position about whether or not determinism and free will are compatible or not, whether they both exist. There are two subcamps within the incompatibilist group that take a stance on whether or not they think free will actually exists. These are the hard determinists and the libertarians. And not libertarian as in political philosophy, but libertarian in the sense of free, like free will, metaphysical freedom. Hard determinism is the view that determinism is true, so free will doesn't exist. Oftentimes, the people who are hard determinists are scientifically and philosophically minded, right? They're going to look at the scientific discoveries that we've made, these discoveries about how atoms work, how electrons and protons interact, how magnetic and electromagnetic fields operate, and they're going to say, look, like the universe operates according to these laws. Atoms can't defy the laws of nature, right? Fields don't just spontaneously change their properties. They operate according to certain rules, fundamental rules baked into the universe. And so because they think free will and determinism are incompatible. They say, determinism is true, so that must mean we don't actually have free will. We might think we do, but at the end of the day, we don't actually have genuine choices ahead of us. What we're going to do is determined by our brain states, by the chemical and biological processes that are going on in our body, our history, our upbringing, all of this stuff. On the flip side of that, there are the libertarians. The libertarians believe that determinism is false, so free will exists. It's actually not true that the universe operates in a deterministic manner. And so we do have free will. These people are going to say, well, look, it certainly feels like we're free. And when we look at scientific findings, what quantum mechanics seems to show is that actually when wave functions collapse, when states of matter reach an equilibrium, that doesn't come about through a deterministic process. If you've ever studied quantum mechanics, you know that we can't determine ahead of time how a wave function is going to collapse. The state that it's going to be in after it does collapse is we can put it on a distribution. It's kind of like a matter of chance how the universe is going to coalesce in a way. And so they're going to say, look, determinism is false, so free will does exist. We do have free will. We have genuine options in life. We can kind of create our own future to some extent. So those are the incompatibilists. The other main camp in this debate is compatibilism. 
if incompatibilism says that free will and determinism are incompatible, what do you think compatibilists say? Right, exactly. They're going to say, look, well, when we're talking about free will, we don't mean this like mystic or spiritual power to choose freely. What we mean is, well, were there lack of constraints in the situation that you came up against, right? Was anybody holding a gun to your head? Was anybody messing with your brain states? You know, was anybody hypnotizing you? If not, we say that you're free. They have a, uh, what you might call, less definitive or less robust idea of what free will actually is. So even if determinism is true, that doesn't mean that we're not free in the relevant ways. That doesn't mean we're not free in how we colloquially speak about what it means to freely act or not freely act. If it turns out that determinism is true, the compatibilists say, that doesn't undermine our ability to freely make decisions. They're actually compatible at the end of the day. Are compatible. Of course, whether or not you fall into one of these camps is going to depend on your conception of free will. If you have a positive conception, like Van Inwagen does, you're probably going to be an incompatibilist, right? Because you're going to say, look, if it's true that the way the future is going to go, there's only one path forward, things are going to happen the way that they're determined to happen. That means that we don't have this power or ability to make choices. However, if you have a negative conception, if you just think free will means that there weren't certain constraints on you, then you're probably going to be a compatibilist. Somebody who thinks, well, look, it doesn't matter if determinism is true or not. They're compatible anyway. We're free in the ways that we care about or in the ways that we talk about things. You know. There's one more camp. In this camp, it doesn't get as much support as the other ones, but it still gets some support, namely from philosophers like Galen Strawson. This is what's known as pessimism, or as my undergraduate advisor used to call it, no free will either wayism. What do you think this view says? No free will. Either which way. Yeah. <laughs> if the universe is deterministic, we don't have free will. And if it turns out that the universe is actually indeterministic, it doesn't operate according to certain laws and principles, and things happen by chance or luck, that also undermines the ability for us to be free. So. It doesn't matter whether determinism is true or not. We can't have free will. It's impossible. The pessimist argument goes something like this. If the universe is deterministic, and this is what we think free will is, then obviously we don't have any genuine choices in front of us. right? We're determined to choose the, ch the choice that we end up making. It can't go any other way. So no free will if determinism is true. But let's assume for a moment that indeterminism is true.
We can define this as the view that what happens in the universe is at least in some respects a matter of chance. You might think quantum mechanics actually supports this, right? Because if it's true that we can't predict how a wave function is going to collapse, how a, a physical state is going to reach equilibrium, if, it's, if it seems to be uh, a matter of chance that those very quantum subatomic processes are not caused by anything in particular, then if things in the universe happen as a matter of chance, how can we have free will? Everything that happens to us and everything that we do is a matter of chance then, right? But free will seems to imply that, you know, we have a say in what happens. But if it's just a matter of chance, we don't have a say in what we do or what happens. So the pessimists are going to say, look, if determinism is true, no free will. If indeterminism is true, no free will either. So free will is impossible. We don't have it. Do these distinctions make sense to you? OK. I'd like now to just move on to what Van Inwagen says in this piece, because that will help us frame our discussion and give you a better sense of what the arguments are for these different camps. What's the Judas argument? Like, uh, in the Bible, Judas ended up killing Jesus, but apparently Jesus already knew it was going to happen. So, like, did Judas have free will or did he not? We're going to encounter an argument like that later. Mm -hmm. So keep that in your back pocket. Yeah, that's an interesting question. In this piece, um, The Mystery of Metaphysical Freedom, Peter Van Inwagen is very honest about this debate. He's been studying it for decades. And as we see, he kind of comes to the conclusion that one of the arguments on these one of these camps must be wrong, but he can't figure out how or why. So he's going to come out and say right away that he's an incompatibilist. He's going to say, look, what we mean when we say free will is this positive conception. That's what we think of. And so I don't think determinism and free will are compatible. But what he goes through in this piece is if we accept this positive conception that what it means to be free is to have this special power or ability to make choices as we see fit, to take those actions that we want to as we see fit, a strange dilemma arises. On the one hand, if we accept that the universe is deterministic, that what's happened in the past is fixed, and in some sense there's only one way for the future to go, given the way that the past is and given what's going on now, that if the universe is deterministic, then what we do isn't free, because what we do is just a product of the laws of nature. And there's only one way things can go. Right? There are no actual genuine options or choices in front of us. 
We'll call this argument one. So that might cause you to believe that, well, it looks like we don't have free will after all, right? But there are problems with that, as we'll see. It certainly seems like we're free, right? You don't feel like your actions are being determined except by your own will, right? You don't feel like you had to come into the room today. You didn't feel like you had to be here taking notes. You feel like, no, you made a voluntary choice to come here, right? It was your decision. But if this argument is right, it implies that we don't have free will, which seems to conflict with our personal experience of life. On the other hand, it doesn't seem like we can have free will if the universe is indeterministic. Call this argument two. If the universe actually doesn't operate according to laws, if what happens is a matter of chance, in some sense, we can't predict it, it's kind of random what happens, then it doesn't seem like we can have free will either. Because what we do is just a matter of chance. We don't have any control over what we do, ultimately. We don't get to determine what we do. Do you guys see the problem here? If the universe is deterministic, it doesn't seem like there are any genuine choices before us. Right? There's only one way the future could go, and we're just going to do the thing that lies on that path. But if the universe is indeterministic, it also seems like we can't have free will. Because what that implies is that what happens in the universe is random, ultimately, or just a matter of chance. There are no underlying deterministic laws making things happen the way that they do. It's just luck or chance. And so we're kind of stuck with this dilemma. If the universe is deterministic, it doesn't seem like we can have free will. If the universe is indeterministic, it doesn't seem like we can have free will either. Now Van Inwagen has spent decades on this question decades discussing free will, going back and forth with other philosophers. But he ends up conceding that, look, I've thought about this a long time, and there's a problem with one of these arguments, but I can't figure it out. There's something weird going on here. 
Okay, it doesn't seem like there's a good answer to the problems that are posed by either of these arguments. There's either a problem with argument one, or there's a problem with argument two, but it seems like these arguments are so airtight that it's hard to see what the problem is and how we can undermine either of these arguments. He can't tell which one of these arguments goes wrong or if both of them go wrong. But it seems that if we have the positive conception of free will, we're stuck with both of them and we don't really have good answers to either of them. They seem like very strong arguments that we don't actually have free will. So to kind of set the scene, let me just go over some of the arguments for and against free will. So you can just get those internalized and baked into your minds here. There are a few different arguments for free will and a few different arguments against free will. We'll start with the arguments against free will. For starters, determinism poses a problem, as we've, as we've been saying this whole time. Right? Based on the best scientific evidence we have, it looks like the universe is deterministic. And if that's true, well, looks like we're shit out of luck. We're not actually free. What we do is just basically what the past and our upbringing and our history and what people have done before us and our biological processes make us do. And we don't have control over any of that stuff. And then two, it seems like, well, if the universe is not deterministic, if indeterminism is true, that implies that what happens is just kind of a matter of chance or luck. And that also means we can't actually control what happens or what we do, ultimately. So these are the two arguments that we just looked at, but I think it's good to summarize them like this. Then there's another problem, another argument we can put against free will. And this kind of goes back to the Judas problem that you raised. Some people think that if God exists, God could grant us free will, right? God can do anything, so why can't God give us the power or the ability to make choices 
to kind of alter the course of the future, even if the term isn't is true. Well, there's a problem with that, which is the problem of divine foreknowledge. What are the properties that God has? Well, we say God is omnibenevolent. He's perfect. He's all good and righteous, right? We say that God is omniscient. He knows everything, right? And we say that God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. Well, if God knows everything, that seems to imply that he knows what's going to happen in the future. And God can't be wrong, right? So it would seem like because God knows what the future is and we, he can't be wrong, we are stuck doing the things that he knows that we'll do. And we don't have any genuine choices, actually. After all, God knew whether you were going to come to class today or not. And so because he knew that, and because he can't be wrong, you were stuck coming to class today. You didn't really have a choice. Right? On account of his knowledge, it would appear as if the future is actually in some sense set in stone. Right? Now let's put the arguments for free will on the board. Well, we can talk about our personal experience, right? Certainly seems like we're free. It feels as if we are free, right? You don't go around thinking to yourself, oh, here I go again, doing what I'm determined to do. I don't have any choices. No, when you go to the cafeteria, you're like, I could choose the mac and cheese or I could choose the hamburger, right? It certainly seems like, based on your own internal lived experience, that you have free will, right? Thus, we certainly feel, think, and act as if we have free will. And perhaps this next argument isn't such a strong one for the existence of free will, but it's an interesting thing to consider nonetheless. Kant brings this up, Immanuel Kant brings this up in his book, Groundwork for the Metaphysics of Morals. where he says, look, people say a lot of things, right? We say that we're free, we say that we believe that we're free, or perhaps that we, we say that we're not free, or we say that we believe that we're not free. But we can't actually dispense with the presumption of free will. If you actually firmly believe that you were not free, what would you do? You just sit around all day, right? It's only by presuming that you are free that you actually act in the world, right? If you actually firmly believe that you are not free, you'd be like, oh, well, I'm determined to sit here and I can't really do anything by my own free will or my own power. But we don't live and act that way. So we can't dispense with the idea of free will. Let's call this the 
personal necessity argument. In order to make sense out of your life, in order to judge yourself and judge other people, in order to do anything, you kind of presume that you have free will. And you can't not presume it. You're stuck presuming it. And then a related argument is one that I'm going to call social necessity. A lot of what we do in life and a lot of how society is organized and run seems to require presuming that free will exists. Let's take morality as an example. We all kind of have this intuition that people are morally responsible for the actions that they have control over, right? So when you go out onto the street and you're just walking by yourself and nothing's happening to you and you decide to just punch an old man for fun, we'd say, look, you're morally responsible for that, okay? Nobody put a gun to your head, right? You had control over your actions and we judge you for that, and maybe we punish you for it, right? So morality itself seems to depend on the fact that we have free will. If nobody had free will, how could we say anybody did anything moral or immoral? They're just doing what they were determined to do, right? And they couldn't have done anything else. So it doesn't make sense to judge them. It doesn't make sense to praise or blame them for anything. So morality seems to go out the window unless we presume free will exists. The same thing with our criminal justice system. <coughs> if people don't actually have control over their actions, how is it fair to punish people for what they do? It doesn't, right? We presume that the people that we lock up in jail and in prison have control over their actions to some extent, and that's why they're being punished, right? But if nobody had any control over what they did, how is it justifiable to punish anybody? Right? They didn't have control over that. The serial murder rapist didn't have control over what he did. So what sense does it make to punish him? Doesn't seem like it's fair. Right? He couldn't have done otherwise. And so society, how society is run, seems to also depend on free will. We'd have to completely reorganize our ideas surrounding morality, rationality, and our criminal justice system if we toss free will out the window. And we can't do that. So that's basically the philosophy, an overview, of the free will debate. Honestly, over the past few thousand years, I don't think that much progress has been made in this debate. There are adamant deniers of free will, and then there are adamant believers of free will. But it seems like some of the arguments on both sides are pretty strong. right? So now let me ask all of you. Do you think you have free will? Or do you think that what you do is just a product of your body and the past and history? Yeah. I was going to ask where the terms fate and destiny come into this. Yeah. Well, what do you think? I, well, I, I don't know how to connect the two. I'm asking. Well, as far as I know, there are two different ways of, of thinking about fate and destiny with respect to free will. You could believe that your fate is already written, right? That everything that's going to happen to you in your life is already predetermined and it's just going to play itself out, right? That's one position that you could take. Or 
you could take the position that, well, maybe our entire lives aren't written out. There are just some major events that are written into our fate. Major things that we can't avoid. But small things we have choices over. There are some things that are determined, but there are some things that are not. Right? Maybe you're determined to go to Point Park, but you're not determined to choose the mac and cheese over the hamburger. So that's one way of thinking about it. Yeah. Either fate completely governs our lives or governs part of our lives, if it exists. Or maybe you don't think fate or destiny exist at all, and you're completely free to do what you want. Yeah. I feel like it has to exist to some extent because at least personally I've experienced multiple instances of deja vu. Like I've either had a dream about a certain super specific event happening that I could have not otherwise like foreseen or like, you know, those set points are set and everything else in between is up to your choice. So like it would be like that, but it continues over. So like, right, it would be like, if you believe that certain things were predetermined, right, written into right. your faith, no matter what choice you take here about what to have for lunch, mm -hmm. right, they're going to coalesce again. Right. And then this is the thing that is determined. You don't have a choice about that. But then, you know, when you're confronted with another minuscule thing, you know, it opens back up again. Right. Yes. Uh, I mean, I believe in free will, but I also believe that there are some things, like I guess, determined by the universe, because, like, I believe the universe does send us signs sometimes, like possibly angel numbers or something like that. So. Okay, so you kind of you kind of take this view. Yeah. Well, There's maybe. some things that you know they're determined for us, but there are other things that are not. What do the rest of you all think? Are you swayed by any of these arguments here? or These arguments seem pretty fucking good. <laughs> right? But it's like, but then what do we do with all that? You know, I feel like I can move this marker around however I want. Right? I can throw it in the trash can if I want it. Or maybe not. Right? Maybe my brain just made me do that. How would I know? Could, could I know? Could any of us know if we were actually free? What were you going to say? Yeah. So my, my personal belief... I'm actually going to grab that marker. <laughs> <laughs> my personal belief is like, so like in everyone's lives, there's like events that are supposed to happen. Okay. But, yeah. but um, I, I look at it like, like kind of like a river and there being like small puddles everywhere. There's like some like certain like features and events that are so like out of the way that like it doesn't really fall into that, but we can still choose those. Okay. So that's how I look at it. Okay, so it's kind of similar to that, but not exactly. But not ex yeah. Why do you believe that? Me, I mean me personally in my life, there's been like ways where like and outcomes that I feel like a lot of people or I think things like should have happened, but there have been like last minute stuff or even something as stupid as me sleeping in or whatever mm -hmm. that has like completely changed everything. Oh, you, so you can pinpoint point, points in your life where, you know, it didn't seem like it was a big deal at the time, but that completely changed yeah. the course of your future. Yeah, Okay. absolutely. Do you think that's just like bias maybe, you know? Maybe to a certain extent, but I mean, okay. So like one of the things, a bunch of my friends <coughs> went out and they got Plus. into a car accident a couple years ago. That okay. That wound up like almost paralyzing my one friend. I was supposed to go with them that night, um, but I slept in. I didn't answer my phone. Mm -hmm. If I had been in that car, I probably would have been the one in the passenger seat because that's I always take shotgun, you know. And something like, 
could have happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's. So you felt like maybe you weren't. It wasn't your destiny to be in that accident, or maybe the universe was pushing you in a particular way. Yeah, but I definitely like I, there definitely is like a universe or whatever that I, I definitely did. You know, I was in that bar. There's there's stuff like that that happens, and even just like not just to me personally, just like to you know people I hear about and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? My personal belief is that there is a force pushing us towards the future, but be it fate or God or something. Okay. There's something pushing us towards the future and large. A specific future. A specific. Like this future. force has a path for you that it wants you to take or yeah. something. The large majority of people just um, accept that force, but I believe that there's also some people who can change their force. Oh, so they can deny it. They can kind of make their own way. Can everybody do that? If they wanted to? Perhaps. Or is it like only a select few? You know? Only like heroes and champions and awesome people or something. But it goes back to that like sort of dream of foresight thing because I remember in a dream I had a super specific conversation with a friend and once I reached the person and so I was like, huh. So I took it and I went like a different way than I remember in the dream, but we still ended up at the same conclusion too. So I get what you mean. That's like interesting. You can change it to an extent, but I've found in my own experience that I come back to it. Okay. <laughs> Anybody think you don't have free will? They're like, look, when I look at the science, when I think about how the universe works, it's clear that What's going on in my mind is just, you know, it's just atoms and energy doing its thing. I have this false belief that I'm free, when in actuality, you know, I'm just doing what the particles inside me moving around are making me do. It's a pretty logical view, right? Does anybody here believe that? Maybe? The only strong force that I can think of is Time itself, because you can't alter it or change it. It always persists. So, right. That's what I'm trying to wrap my head around right now. Time is a weird thing. We'll be talking about th that in the next class. Yeah. What is the nature of time? Is time just a product of our mind? Is it like a structure of our mind, how we perceive the world? Is time something that exists independently of us? Does it does it flow? Yeah, those are all interesting questions. I don't know. But we'll investigate them. Yeah. I just thought of something. Free will can only exist in the present. Because if when you look at the past, the past is one like set outcome that we, we can see. So we know It seems to be fixed, right? Be fixed. <clears throat> but then we have all these time travel shows and movies that are like, you can actually change the past, right? But then a lot of philosophers are like, no, it's already happened, so you can't change. You know, it's like set in stone. And so by if you try to go back in time and change things, you'll fail. It won't happen. It makes, it makes me wonder, like, if I, um, if there's, like, a Groundhog Day situation, you know, it would be, like, super interesting to see, like, if they exist, because if they exist, and everything has a set operation, I can flip a coin, like, four times in a row. Yeah. Each, each, like, Groundhog Day go through, like, it would be this exactly the same. Yeah. And if it was different, then that would kind of prove free will. But or at least it would prove indeterminism, yeah. right? But maybe indeterminism doesn't actually grant us anything, right? If things are just a matter of chance, we don't have control over what we do, right? Have you all thought about this question before? What did you talk about with your friends, if you did? Yeah. I don't know. Kind of to piggyback on what you said, like I feel like if there are like predetermined things that happen in life, but like let's say like something tragic happens to you, like I don't know, like you know, like things happen for a reason. Like it kind of like I don't know, it kind of like feels like sour because it's like like the stuff like bad things are supposed to happen. Sure. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel like there are things in your life that have happened for a reason? 
Yeah, some things like me coming here. Yeah. Do you feel like? I guess that's a separate question from. Did you feel like you had a choice in coming? So would you place yourself in the free will camp then? I feel like I'm in the middle. I see both sides. This is, this is what makes the debate so difficult, right? These arguments seem airtight. Okay, how do, you, how do you refute any of these arguments? But at the same time, all of this is true. So what do we do with that? That's like the paradox, right? This is certainly true, right? You don't wake up in the morning and feel like, there my body goes, making me go to the bathroom, right? No, you're like, I have to take a piss, right? So you get up and you go to the bathroom. And you could stay in bed if you wanted. I'm sure a lot of you have had that experience, right? You're like, oh, I gotta pee, but I don't wanna get out of my bed. I'm just gonna stay here, right? So this seems true. And it doesn't seem like we fundamentally, ultimately believe that we're unfree. We think that we have genuine options, right? You could have gone to a different college. You could have chosen not to take this class. You could choose if you wanted to right now just to leave, right? Here I go, I'm leaving. <laughs> and not come back if I wanted to, but I'm gonna come back, right? So that seems right also. And then this also seems right, right? How? How the heck are we going to build a society without presuming people are morally responsible for their actions? Our minds don't work like that. Our behaviors and our actions don't work like that. Our judgments of other people don't work like that. It's kind of like the I think therefore I am argument, but a social necessity part, because like you can't question free will if you don't have free will. Unless you're determined to question it. <laughs> but then how would you know, right? A really weird part is that, and some philosophers have written about this, if this is true, if this argument is true, this implies something very strange about how we should be carrying out punishment and reward. Have you all ever heard of the phrase punishment? No. That, like, stuff. No, no. The idea goes something like this. The the idea goes something like this. Look, we punish people because we think we have they have control over their actions, right? But in a universe in which nobody was free, not only would punishment be unjustifiable, actually, we are morally obligated to make prison as fun as possible. We should give prisoners Xboxes and flat screen TVs and all the cake and cupcakes they want. Because after all, they didn't have any control over whether or not they ended up there. They didn't have control over what they did. So actually, we're, we're obligated to make prison happy fun time land. It should be sweet. Anybody think this idea is weird or crazy? But do you see how it follows from this, though? Right? If nobody has control over their actions, it doesn't seem like it's justifiable to punish anybody. So, you know, because there are a bunch of people there that didn't have control over what they did, we should make their time as good as we can. That's within our power. It's a strange argument. And then there are some philosophers who say, we know we think free will doesn't exist, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Only the scientists and the philosophers and the smart people should know. Because if the populace found out that they didn't have free will, society would crumble and devolve into chaos. So we need to keep telling people free will exists even though it doesn't. We have to keep the non-existence of free will a secret. What do you think about that? Do you think people would start burning the city down if they were told they didn't have free will? Science has proved you don't have free will, right? Would society fall apart? 
for their burning of the city would be predetermined. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But as Saul Smolansky would say, a philosopher, people are reasons responsive. Their, their brains are responsive to reasons. So if you give someone a reason to do something or a reason not to do something, they will tend to respond in a certain way. Now that response is predetermined, but it might be the giving of the reason that is the relevant factor that determines what they do. We just don't know, you know, whether we're determined or not to give the reason. Kind of a weird argument. So I don't know. I don't know how to get out of this dilemma. Anybody have any ideas? They could combine it all, like, rather than the bottom graph, which is pretty darn accurate, or like, rather than the three strands, it would be like a scatter plot, and then those. That way you could coalesce all of them. Because you can't deny any of them, but you can't prove any of them definitely mm. either. So like if you squeeze everything into like a big old bar in itself, then it would be all true. It would be a paradox of itself, of a paradoxical question. <laughs> Kant uh, famously uh, said that not only can we not dispense with the idea of free will, but that we can't prove one way or the other that free will exists. Y'all believe that? We can't prove it one way or the other. We'll never be able to prove it definitively. We can construct arguments, we can construct reasons, but we'll never be able to prove it. What do you think about that? Yeah. Oh, okay, I mean, I guess, you know, because free will depends on, like, I guess you could say, you know, a person and their like uh, ideas and things, perceptions, experiences. So I guess like depending on a person, you know, it could be denied or you know, they could say it exists. So. Well, do you think we could prove or disprove free will? I mean, it depends. I don't know because you got all that stuff there. Yeah, it's hard, right? There's too, there's too much. So uh, I mean. <laughs> I don't know, if you do try to, I guess it would be like, you lean more one way than the other way, but I don't know. Yeah. So okay. I that was confusing. No, no. I'm glad to hear everybody's thoughts. Does anybody think we will be, ever gr be able to prove or disprove free will? Uh, when we can fully understand the element of time, then yes. You think I so? Think, okay. I think there's something, because time affects every decision that we make. Everything expends time. And if we can fully understand what time is, I think we can find out an answer to this question. Okay. So maybe if we discovered that, you know, let's say this is the present moment, okay? Present. All of this is the past. And we have the future. The determinists are kind of thinking along the line that, you know, all of this is already determined in a sense, right? There's only one way that things can go, there's only one path to take forward. But maybe if we found out that the future is actually non-existent, maybe that would show we have free will, or at least be a little piece of evidence in our toolbox, maybe? Right, but then there's still like set points of past and future in that because to prove that time exists, there has to be a beginning of time and an end of time. And the stuff in between could be of free will or not of free will. But everything proceeding from the present should lead to the end of time. I could give you maybe one argument against one of these. Let's see what you think about this. This is an interesting argument, but this argument could be rebutted in the following way. God knows everything. That's true. 
but the future is non-existent, so there's nothing for God to know, so we have free will. What do you think about that? The future is non-existent, so there's nothing for God to know, so we're not trapped doing what God knows is going to happen. But the future is probably existent in another parallel universe, you just don't know it yet. That's possible, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. What if you simply just like don't believe in God and then the entire argument is just like non-existent when looking at this? Yeah, you might not think this is a good argument at all, because you don't think God exists. But then obviously, right, whether or not you believe in God has no impact on whether he exists or not. Ready? Right? So, all turns on this. But yeah, you might not be convinced this is a good argument at all. And you're just like, eh, whatever, throw it out. I don't buy this presumption that God exists, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's one thing. Let's run through just a couple examples, and then I'll let you all go. See what you all think about these, okay? Let's think about what kinds of people have control over their actions and are therefore morally responsible for their actions. Because this is always an interesting discussion to have. It's an average day, <coughs> you're walking down the street, you haven't taken any drugs, you're not under hypnosis, you have control what you, over what you do when you walk down the sidewalk. Do we generally think that? like yeah okay seems like you know when we're going about our day-to-day -day life it seems like we have control over our actions and therefore we're morally responsible for them right how about people with mental illnesses Let's say your professor is really depressed. All right, I'm depressed. I'm really sad. I just don't want to get out of bed in the morning. I don't have the energy and the motivation to do it. I promised one of you I was going to come to your dance recital, and it really means a lot to you. But you know, I'm just depressed, so I don't show up. And you're like, Professor Gunner, why didn't you show up? That really meant a lot to me. You know, I was like, Oh, I just wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling it. I just couldn't get out of bed. Should I be held morally responsible for that? Yeah. I think so, because uh, as someone who does have clinical depression, I attempt to get out of bed. <laughs> um, and I mean, it, it affects everyone. There's no set way like depression can affect you, right? Because it, it, everyone has different scales, different, you know, some people, you know, should be in a institution where they get help, you know, with every step of the way. Some people are very high functioning. Some people fall in the middle. So So maybe it depends yeah. on the severity of your depression? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with that, but I also think they should be held more responsible because like mental Okay. When it comes to depression, even if it's really debilitating, like, look, hey, you could be doing things to get help, 
you're not doing them, so we can't just let you off the hook. Okay. Yeah. This is gonna be like controversial. If the, if the argument is free will here, it was your free will to knock out. So like, sure, you did a shitty thing, but like, morally, I don't think you should be held responsible because you acted on your own free will. Okay. Okay. Sure. It makes sense. But then there's also the argument of knowing that you know you don't want to go. So like you're morally responsible for at least telling the person who has a hope that you are coming, that mm. you may or may not come. Okay, so the situation could have been handled differently, and right. they're morally responsible for that. Yeah, it's all about knowledge of the future. For this. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit murky when it comes to depression. Maybe it depends on the severity. How about if you're bipolar? You have medication that you could be taking, but you don't like how it makes you feel. And in your episodes, you lash out and you hurt people. And they're like, hey, like, take your medication, stop doing that. Like, should you be held morally responsible for those kinds of things that you do in an episode? Do you have free will in an instance like this? I mean, you have free will to take your medication. If you're not taking your medication, then yeah, that impacts that. Okay, so because you have free will in taking your medication, you're responsible for what follows if you don't take it. You should be held responsible for that. Okay. Maybe the same thing with like drunkenness, mm -hmm. right? People do stupid things when they're drunk, but it seems like they have a choice to drink or not. Yeah. Right? Which is why we don't let drunk drivers off the hook, right? Because we'll say things like, well, look, you didn't mean to hit the kid. You know, you didn't have control over the vehicle, but you chose to drink. You chose to drive. Yeah. And you chose to drive, right? Yeah. What about somebody who's schizophrenic? Do they have free will? Are they responsible for their actions? I mean, it depends on what type you could be talking. Because, you know what I mean? Like, if they have, like, paranoid, like, schizophrenia, then, like, they may not realize, like, their free will because then, you know what I mean? Like, it... It the lines of reality. Right, right, since they don't have an accurate so, picture of reality, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it kind of... Some of them. Yeah. What do you all think? Does it depend, or is this an open and shut case? But it's still the same thing. Like, if you have something to help clear the lines of reality, whether it be medication or, I don't know, something, like, you should be able to perceive what a future would be if said line of gravity was normal. I don't know. Okay. So if you did have some self knowledge, you did you had some degree of ability to do things that will help ameliorate your condition and you're not, then we would say you're responsible for what follows. Right. Okay. What about people who grew up in a cult? You grew up in a cult since the day you were born that taught you all these wacky things about the world, taught you a skewed version of morality. Are they responsible for what they do? And do they actually have free will? I mean, well, I feel like if they're out of the cult, they have more free will than when they are in the cult. But also at the same time, I mean, I guess you could, like, read things and you could, like, try to learn for yourself. So then you could try to, like, learn things and then you could, like, have your own decisions then. Okay. You know so I mean? so like, if, you, if you left the cult yeah. and you have this information available to you, right, you have access to the internet, maybe we expect you to kind of change what you think. And, and how you act? Yeah, kind of. If you have access to the information? I feel like um, some things are predetermined, like just based on like, your biology and like, your environment growing up. Mm, right. But you have free will to choose what you want to do with that. Like, okay. Like something bad happened in your childhood, like, have a choice if you want 
If you're still in a cult, do you have free will? And should you be held morally responsible for your actions if you kill someone? Somebody comes onto your property, you know, your cult property, and you were told, hey, go kill that guy. He's an enemy. He's an agent of the devil. And you do it. Should you be held morally responsible for that? I was going to say, like, I think you have a free will, like, to kill that person or not. But because you grew up in a cult, your morality is probably different than someone else. So probably not, like, be held accountable morally, but you okay. still had a choice to do it or not. Okay, so maybe... Maybe something like this. So it's all about defining what's moral too, because moral for occultists could be murdering everyone you see, and right. moral for a depressed person would be, I don't know, telling somebody that you might not show up to an event. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's all about the knowledge of what you're doing, what doing it would do, and then figuring out depending on your definition of morals, if you're responsible for it. So okay. like, yeah. Let's take an extreme case. People who are mind controlled. Literally somebody put devices in their brain to control how their brain works. Their perceptions, how they feel and how they act. Do they have free will? Should they be held morally responsible for their actions? I think a lot of people would say no. But now let's take a more fringe case. This is the last one we'll talk about. How about people with addictions? Do they have free will? And are they morally responsible for what they do? Does it depend on the drug? Does it depend on the severity of the addiction? What do you think? I feel like going into it, if you know it's a drug, then there's a you know, there's a chance of getting an addiction, and therefore, they, if they choose to do that drug, then they were at a potential risk of getting an addiction. Therefore, they did have free will on that, and then they are more at least responsible for that and their actions on that drug. Okay. Would you think differently if you were at a party and somebody just came up with, came up behind you and was like, "Ha and jabbed you with a needle and stuck meth in you? <laughs> or heroin or something. Whatever it is. Well, yeah. And now probably, you have an addiction. Probably, probably because it's like you didn't get to choose that and they you know, they took away they violate your free will there, so yeah, probably. Okay. Okay. I was just gonna say a more realistic situation to what you propose would be like if you get in a car accident and you need to go to the hospital and they prescribe you, you know, pain medication. Right. You take that pain medication in order to help, but addiction is like a mental thing that, in, a, in my opinion, is like genetic, and you don't know if you have that or not, and that can create an addiction right there that you didn't choose. Right. And you can't control whether or not you have the craving, right? Can you control if you act on it or not? Yeah, because exposure to a drug doesn't necessarily constitute the addiction. Like, you may desire it in the future, but it's still your choice to want it or not want it, or get it or not get it, or take it. Right, yeah, I would say get it or not get it, maybe, but yeah. you want it, right? Right. <laughs> like, you can't control if you want that meth or not, right? Yeah, but you can control if, like, you know, you heat up a spoon and jab it in yourself or something. Sure, yeah. You see how difficult it can be to determine if somebody actually has a free will and when we should hold them morally responsible? This is a very thorny topic. I'm, I think, for like all of these cases, it might depend on a case-by-case -case thing. You know, severity of the affliction. Uh, are there any options available to them that they can get treatment? Um, do they have the resources available to them, like, now, in order to help themselves or not? These are all relevant factors. So, uh, 
Maybe this is a maybe. Maybe this is a maybe. I don't know. Maybe you just think it's no for all these. Maybe you, maybe you believe people just don't have free will. In which case, well, you don't have a choice about that. So any comments or questions? Yeah. I feel like my heart is pretty airtight. Is there any situation where it would be? Which one? Your, your choice about any future action, so long as you know the future action, you should be morally responsible. Regardless of whether or not you have free will? Right. You could believe that. There, there are some people who think free will doesn't exist, but we're still morally responsible. Some theologians believe this. They're going to say, look, according to what the Bible says, some Calvinists might say, whether or not you're going to go to heaven or hell is already predetermined. But you do deserve it. Right? Whatever you get. Which is hard to square. But some people believe it. But I think for most people, whether or not you have free will is going to determine whether or not you can be held morally responsible. Okay. Thank you for coming to class, everybody.